you doing? My name is Ryan, and today I'm unveiling my list for the best and worst DC minifigures. Consider this the sequel to the Marvel minifigure video I made a while back, as I'm following similar rules. I'm only looking at minifigures of named characters. That means no big figs, micro figs, nano figs, builds, or henchmen fodder minifigures. With that, let's start with 2006, and the best figure of that year, I think, is Two-Face. This is a really strong figure from concept to design to execution, with two different color legs, a clean torso and face print, plus a custom molded two color hairpiece. And while this figure didn't fully break the Lego mold like the 1989 pirate with the peg leg and hook hand, this 2006 Two-Face minifigure definitely set the bar pretty high for other adaptations of this character, some of which may even appear later on in this list. But how about the worst? I think for 2006, the worst is the Riddler. It's not necessarily bad, it's just the least interesting of that year. Overall, it's a pretty monotone figure and just kind of bland. 2007, best of this year, I believe is Batman. I love the mask and cape in dark blue, and the torso print is very clean and crisp. This is a great first step in making figure variations of Batman, and it's such a great concept that it hasn't really stopped since, for better or for worse. But how about the worst of 2007? I believe it's Bane. This figure would have worked better as a big fig. Heck, the first modern big fig would come only one year later with 2008's Giant Troll, even though LEGO had been making larger figures since the Rock Monster in 1999. As for the figure we get, his face print is odd with his eyes so far apart and the strongly fuzzier lines on the torso. The Bane figure by itself is okay-ish, but I think the concept needs a lot of work. It should have been a big fig. 2008. The best figure of that year, I think, is Harley Quinn. This design is pulled right out of the animated series, nicely balanced red, black, and white design, and a little hint of blue in the eyes for a pop of contrast. Plus, we finally get leg printing and hip printing. While the idea of leg printing had already existed, I think there actually were some figures in the 90s that had leg printing. This was the first DC character to get that treatment, and it looks so good. On the flip side, the worst of this year is Mr. Freeze. Without the black chest piece, it's just a blue figure with a clear helmet. Pretty lackluster. Plus, I think the clear dome was done better with sandy cheeks. Now, I didn't see any minifigures for 2009 or 2010, so if I missed any of them, or if you don't agree with any of my rankings, let me know in the comment section down below. So we'll skip to 2011, which only had three Comic-Con figures, which were technically previews of the 2012 Superheroes wave, but the best, I think, was Superman. This was the first minifigure of the Blue Boy Scout, and he looks great. The torso is clean, the red hip piece is a great touch, and the one strand of hair dipping into the face looks phenomenal. It's a look that I've tried to do, and no matter how hard I try to get only one strand of hair to cross over my face, it just never looks as good as Superman. As for the worst of 2011, I say it's Green Lantern. It's not really a bad figure, just kind of the least best. Moving on to 2012, the best of that year is Poison Ivy. This is a great design with printing on the hairpiece, nice touch, and a good movement of the torso print into the leg print. Plus, this is a great improvement from the previous Poison Ivy figure, a trend that you think would be kind of consistent with LEGO improving with each iteration of the figure, but as you'll see, that's not always the case. For example, the worst of 2012 is Bane again. They hardly changed anything from the previous figure. While yes, the print is technically better, it's kind of like putting a fresh coat of paint on a rickety old house you haven't addressed the main issues yet of it should have been a big figure or some sort of larger than life character. How about 2013? The best of that year, I think, is General Zod from Man of Steel. This includes an amazing custom helmet and torso piece, a great print underneath that torso, and a really imposing silhouette overall. And while the face print kind of bears little resemblance to the actor Michael Shannon, the figure really is best with the helmet on. Again, has a great imposing silhouette. But how about the worst of this year? In 2013, it's Colonel Hardy, with a pretty unremarkable face, a pretty unremarkable torso, no leg printing, and I'm pretty sure the character wasn't even bald, he just had thin hair. This feels like kind of a throwaway figure, and therefore, the worst. How about 2014? It's kind of no contest. The best is the Dark Knight Joker figure. This has an outstanding print, with the makeup lines on the face, the coat printing on the legs, and every detail feels right at place. I'm really impressed LEGO was able to import the kind of horror-esque design of the Dark Knight Joker and transform it into the more cutesy LEGO style without losing the core element of the character. 
that's really good design work and easily makes this the best figure of 2014. As for the worst, I think it's Robin with his short cape. There's an overabundance of red in this figure and it makes the detail lines really hard to see. It almost feels like the figure is missing contrast, like when your printer runs out of black ink. How about 2015? The best of that year, I think, is Supergirl. With an incredible female torso print, the dual almost tri-molded legs with the top, midsection, and boots. And overall, I think the Supergirl figure has a great visual impact and acts as a kind of improvement of the original Superman figure. The same can't be said though for the worst of 2015 as it's Martian Manhunter. This is a really pared down version of the previous iteration of this character, even with the cape. The blue legs kind of camouflage with the cape as there's no printing on them. So Martian Manhunter looks more like a prototype minifigure than a final one. Darn shame. Moving to 2016, the best figure of that year is Wonder Woman from BVS. There is so much detail on this figure, but so well handled. The tiara print on the head, the wrist gauntlets, the tricolored legs, the waist. This feels like one flowing print as opposed to multiple pieces. It's funny, a lot of people in the comments of my knockoff minifigure videos say that I am too harsh on figures that have too much detail on them. But I think this is a good example of how a lot of detail can still play as to one visually cohesive piece. It's not overwhelming to the eye. You can see every shape and form within one glance. That's a good level of detail and detail handled very, very well. But how about the worst of this year? I think it's Talia Al Ghul. There's really only one new piece and it's not even that recognizable. Just a red zip up suit. The face, hair and legs are all repeats. If you showed me this figure with no context, I'd have no idea that it's Talia Al Ghul. And that makes it the worst of 2016. How about 2017? The best of this year, I think, is Two-Face. This is one of the best prints I've ever seen, with so much incredible detail, a beautiful color palette, and a great new custom two-tone hairpiece. In my mind, this is taking the original Two-Face figure from 2006 and elevating it with the exact same kind of concept, just taking it far beyond what anybody could have expected. This is such an incredible figure, and again, a lot of detail, but still easily readable with one glance. Incredible job. On the flip side, the worst of 2017 is Mutant Leader. This really has nothing special at all to it. So much so, it actually detracts from me wanting to learn more about the character. There is one plus side to this figure though. If you're looking to make a TMNT Krang minifigure, that face print has potential. How about 2018? The best I feel is Batwoman. This is one of those figures that feels like a 3D version of a comic drawing. The accent lines are fantastic, the color contrast is bold, and the new hair and cowl piece is picture perfect. Plus, it's one of the few figures where I truly believe that her eyes could be under that mask in the right spot, as opposed to some of the Batman figures where the eyes are a little bit too high. But how about the worst of this year? I think it's Reverse Flash. This is a washed out, single tone print with little variation in color. And this poor contrast is especially noticeable in the face, where it's a peach face and a yellow baraclava around it, making it really hard to see what parts the face and what parts the head. I know that Reverse Flash is yellow in the comics, but I think this figure could have really used a much more refined design and a much more refined print to make it even readable as a character. Moving to 2019, the best figure I think is Tim Burton's Batman. With how many LEGO Batman figures already existed up to this point, I was really curious how LEGO was going to differentiate this one to make it feel like the Michael Keaton Batman. And they did a really good job. The new cape cow chest piece actually mimics the stiffness of the original costume. Add to that a picture-perfect print and a really great Keaton smirk face. And yeah, this figure kind of lives up to the hype. But how about the worst of 2019? It's Mr. Freeze. This feels like the designers have learned nothing from the early DC figures. It feels antiquated with no real design impetus or direction. There's no arm printing, no leg printing, the chest piece is just kind of generic robot, and they almost didn't change the face print at all from the first figure. Yeah, if you put these two figures side by side, it's clear one is better, but I think both of them are still pretty bad. If not, yeah, the worst of their respective years. 2020, the best minifigure of this year, I think is Harley Quinn. This figure does a lot for a retail figure. Great torso print, great leg print, two colored arms. It has a playful and fun face print, custom hair piece. And this figure was included in a $15 accessory pack. That is a 
bargain for a figure that almost looks like a Comic-Con print. In my mind, it's even better than the Jack Nicholson Joker figure we got that exact same year. This Harley Quinn really is just that incredible. Same can't be said for the worst of 2020, which I think is Maxwell Lord. It's just a boring figure, a suit, a face. This figure is probably a result of LEGO trying to save money by using repeat prints and repeat faces, but again, this is the main villain of Wonder Woman 1984, a named character. So I think Maxwell Lord should have been better. But how about 2021? The best minifigure I think is the Penguin from The Batman. This figure is a masterclass on how to make a figure both unattractive and attractive. The speckling and scowl lines on the face are perfect. The transition print from the torso to legs is incredible. It almost camouflages the hips, making it invisible. So well done. Frankly, this is one of the best torso to leg print transitions I have ever seen, so it's nice to see LEGO keep on improving their print designs and their print quality. But how about the worst of 2021? I think it's the Batman classic TV outfit. This feels like a much cheaper version of the first 1960s Batman figure, almost to the point of it looking like a knockoff. The extra black lines and legs, the poor contrast and print quality really do a disservice to this figure. And you slap on a faded face print on a dark head and boom, you got yourself a bad figure. Now, according to Bricklink, there hasn't been a single DC minifigure released in 2022. So what's your favorite DC minifigure? And what do you think of my ranking of the best and worst DC figures from each year? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.